We're going to take a look at a second way to calculate slope, and in this case we're going to use the formula y minus y over x minus x. This is going to be useful when you have, well, when you don't have a graph, because remember, if you have a graph, you're probably going to want to just do your counting, your rise over your run. But if you don't have a graph, it's not easy to count the rise over the run, and you would then opt to use y minus y over x minus x. I'll show you. In this first example, you see we definitely don't have a graph. It's written out, it says, what is the slope of a line that travels through these two points? Well, I don't have a graph, so what I can do, and it's just the exact same advice I gave when I did the rise over run video, the very first thing you should do is write down the formula you're going to use. So instead of writing rise over run, because you don't have a graph, you write y minus y over x minus x. There's no reason to skip that step. Then, if you think about these two ordered pairs, they have an x and a y, an x and a y. Be careful not to mix those up. And now I just choose my y and my other y, a 2 and a 0, and I just say 2 minus 0, y minus y, 2 minus 0. Now be aware Whatever order you went for your y's, you have to go in the same order with your x's. So because I went 2 minus 0 for my y's, I now have to go 0 minus a minus 5. Minus a minus 5, be careful, because subtraction and negatives are your enemy in algebra. Minus a minus 5 is like 0 plus 5, so I get a slope of 2 fifths. Now, by the way, if somebody chose to do the other order, they're still going to get the same answer as me. In the first example, I went 2 minus 0 for my y minus y. But what if I went 0 minus 2, y minus y? For my x minus x, I have to follow that order, and it's a negative 5 minus 0. Now, if I do this, 0 minus 2 is negative 2. Negative 5 minus 0 is negative 5 and a negative divided by a negative is a positive, so I get the exact same answer as I did with the other one. Just be aware that whatever order you choose to go with the y's, you have to follow that same order with the x's. And be aware that you should write this down first, because oftentimes students who don't end up mixing up the x's and the y's. Hey, let me show you something. The part that I wrote here in words was actually describing this red line. This red line goes through the point negative 5, 0 and 0, comma 2. And we did this problem in a previous video. To get from here to here, I did a rise over a run. And if I travel from here to here, my rise is upward 2 on the y-axis, positive 5 for my run, and I got 2 fifths. So if I had a graph, counting the rise over the run gave me the exact same answer as using the y, the y minus y over x minus x. So you just choose whatever one works easiest for you in the situation. Here's the next problem, and I would say if you want to do some darn good learning, you should write y minus y over x minus x, put your x and your y underneath both of those points, and then go ahead and try to work this out on your own, and then pause the video when you're doing it, and come back and compare your answer to my answer, because in four seconds, I'm going to unveil my answer. Pause the video. Okay. So here is the answer you should have got if you worked that out on your own. Now, of course, if you didn't work it out on your own, you look at my work and you say, yep, I agree with that. But be very careful, because it's really easy to agree with someone else's work. You do a heck of a lot more learning if you do your own work and then compare. Um, and by the way, if somebody else did this in a different order, because I went negative 3 minus a negative 4, if you did it in reverse order, negative 4 minus a negative 3, you would reverse the order on the x's, but you would still get the same answer. One more example and we're done. Once again, I have the same advice. You should take this, do your y minus y over x minus x on your own, and then pause the video 
before I reveal my answer so that we can see if you're getting the same thing I'm getting. That should be the answer you got. And remember that since slope is always some version of change in y over change in x or some version of rise over run, very frequently people will say negative 3 is an okay way to write it, but I would rather write it like that or like that or like that. And by the way, if you go back to the previous video, all three of these examples were literally exactly the same lines that we have here. They were just described with points rather than a graph, and we should get the same answer either way. Become very, very expert at calculating slope because you're going to need it when we start graphing lines.